Grover, put your shoes back on, Dolly said. You're freaking her out. Hey, my hoofs are clean. Bianca, I said, we came here to help you. You and Nico need training to survive. Dr. Thorne won't be the last monster you meet. You need to come to camp. Camp? She asked. Camp Half-Blood, I said. It's where the Half-Bloods learn to survive and stuff. You can join us and stay year-round if you like. Sweet! Let's go, Nico said. Wait, Bianca shook her head. I don't... There is another option, Zoe said. No, there isn't, Dahlia said. Dahlia and Zoe glared at each other. I didn't know what they were talking about, but I could tell there was a bad history between them. For some reason, they seriously hated each other. We've been in these children long enough, Artemis announced. Zoe, we will rest here for a few hours, raise the tents, treat the wounded, retrieve our guest belongings from the school. Yes, my lady. What about me? Nico asked. Artemis considered the boy. Perhaps you can show Grover how to play that card game you enjoy. I'm sure Grover would be happy to entertain you for a while. As a favor for me? Grover just about tripped over himself getting up. Y you bet! Come on, Nico! Nico and Grover walked off into the woods, talking about hit points and armor ratings and a bunch of other geeky stuff. Artemis let it confuse him with Bianca along the cliff. The hunters began unpacking their knapsacks and making camp. Zoe gave Thalia one more evil look, then left to oversee things. As soon as she was gone, Thalia stamped her foot in frustration. The nerves of those hunters! They think they're so... Ugh! I'm with you, I said. I don't trust... Oh, you're with me? Thalia turned on me furiously. What were you thinking back there at the gym, Percy? You take down Dr. Thorne all by yourself? You knew he was a monster. I... If we'd stuck together, we could have taken him and the hunters and... without the hunters getting involved. Annabeth might still be here. Did you think about that? My jaw clenched. I thought of some harsh things to say, and I might have said them too. But then I looked down and saw something navy blue lying in the snow at my feet. Annabeth's New York Yankees baseball cap. Dahlia didn't say another word. She wiped a tear from her che cheek, turned, and marched off, leaving me alone with a trampled camp of the cap in the snow. The hunters set up their camping site in a matter of minutes. Seven large tents, all of silver silk, curved in a crescent around one side of the bonfire. One of the girls blew a silver dog whistle, and a dozen white wolves appeared out of the woods. They began circling the camp like guard dogs. The hunters walked around and fed them treats, completely unafraid, but I decided I'd stick close to the tents. Falcons watched us from the trees, their eyes flashing in the firelight, and I got the feeling they were on guard duty too. Even the weather seemed to have been to the goddess's will. The air was still cold but the wind died down and the snow stopped falling. It was almost pleasant sitting by the fire. Almost. Except for the pain in my shoulder and the guilt weighing me down. I couldn't believe Annabeth was gone. And as angry as I was at Thalia, I had a sinking feeling that she was right. It was my fault. What had Annabeth wanted to tell me in the gym? Something serious, she'd said. Now I might never find out. I thought about how we danced together for half a song, and my heart felt even heavier. I watched Dahlia pacing in the snow at the edge of the camp, walking among the wolves without fear. She stopped and looked back at Westover Hall, which was now completely dark, looming on the hillside behind the trees. I wonder what she was thinking. Seven years ago, Dahlia had been turned into a pine tree by her father to prevent her from dying. She had stood her ground against an army of monsters on top of Camp Half-Blood Hill in order to give her friends Luke and Annabeth time to escape. She had only been back as a human for a few months now and once in a while she'd stand so motionless you'd think she was still a tree. Finally, one of the hunters brought me in my backpack. Grover and Nico came back from their walk, and Grover helped me fix up my wounded arm. It's green, Nico said with delight. Hold still, Grover told me. Here, eat some ambrosia while I clean that out. I whined as he dressed the wound, but the ambrosia square helped me some. It tasted like a homemade brownie, dissolving in my mouth and sending a warm feeling through my whole body. Between that and the magic salve that Grover used, my shoulder felt better within a couple minutes. Nico rummaged through his own bag, which the hunters had apparently packed for him, though how they'd snuck into Westover Hall and seen, I didn't know. Nico laid out a bunch of figurines in the snow, little battle replicas of Greek gods and heroes. I recognized Zeus with a lightning bolt, Ares with a spear, and Apollo with his sun chariot. Big collection, I said. Nico grinned. I've got almost all of them, plus the holographic cards. Well, except for the really rare ones. 
You've been playing this game for a long time? Just this year, but before that... He knit his eyebrows. What? I said. Forget it, it's weird. He looked unsettled, but that didn't last long. 